Hey everybody, how's it going? Mike from the Focus Garage coming at you with another video here. And today we're gonna to be covering some of the basics in a C6 Corvette Grand Sport Buyer's Guide. Now, as you may have already seen a few months back on the channel, I went ahead and I picked up this 2011 Corvette Grand Sport in Inferno Orange, and I kind of went through the process of shopping different cars. When it comes to the C6 Corvette, kind of trying to figure out what I liked, what I didn't like, and I wanted to put together a video that's easy to kind of follow and see what you're getting with different trim packages, different years, different models of the C6 Corvette to kind of let you know what you're getting with these vehicles, because you will find the C6 Corvette kind of priced all over the place, anywhere from, you know, more basic models, the earlier 05s, 06s, to as cheap as like $15,000 and less, or you see a nicely spec, you know, Z06 for $40,000 or more, or ZR1s, you know, in the 60s. So they're all over the place, depending on what you want. This video is gonna be more kind of focused on the Grand Sport versus the Z06. Um, so if you want a Z06 video, let me know, and we can go ahead and make one of those kind of covering the different trim levels and things to watch for for the different years of the Z06. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started. What this is, is a Corvette Grand Sport, and they made these from 2010 to 2013 in the C6 Corvette generation. So um, the C6 was around all the way from 05 to 2013. So if you're looking at a Grand Sport, you're only looking at a select three, pretty much N years of the generation there. The reason that uh, I wanted to go for the Grand Sport is I love the removable roof. I love the fact that you've got the bigger brakes from the Z06 and the very, very similar wide body, but you have kind of that more toned down LS3 versus the LS7, and I won't even get into that in this video. So if you're looking at a Grand Sport, you can get them from 2010 to 2013. Now, you can actually get them as well with the coupe model like this with the removable target top, or you can also get them as a convertible, a drop top convertible. The Grand Sport can also be found with a six speed manual or an automatic transmission. Now, if you ask a lot of enthusiasts, the Grand Sport to have is going to be any of the coupes with a manual transmission. What you get with that is a hand built LS3 engine with the dry sump oiling system that's out of the Z06 and the ZR1. The manual Grand Sport Coupe is the only Grand Sport and non-Z06 or ZR1 Corvette that gets the hand-built motor and that gets the dry sump system. So if you look at like a manual convertible or an automatic coupe, you're not getting that. You're just getting your run-of-the-mill LS3, regular, you know, uh, oil system, nothing crazy there. So if you want the more kind of performance-oriented version and, you know, there's a whole slew of reasons why you'd want something with dry sump, definitely only look at the manual coupe Grand Sport. Now, like I was saying, they made these from 2010 to 2013, so kind of the later years of the C6 production. If you find a model as a 2012 or 2013, they are gonna have nicer seats in the interior. And it's not a huge difference as far as the seats, but people say that these hold up a little bit better, um, they wear a little bit better, the leather doesn't really crack or you know get frayed as easily as the uh, 2010, 2011 models. So you've got that there. So the first thing, you know, if you wanna look at the absolute best interior, you're gonna wanna go with a 2012 or 2013. It's not a huge difference, but again, if you're looking to kind of maximize it, something to think about there. Grand Sports can be equipped with the magnetic ride suspension, and that is a standalone option. So um, there is different trim levels, and on the Grand Sport, they're described as LT designations. So there's one LT all the way through four LT, and depending on what that is, will kind of describe what the options uh, the car has. But outside of those option packages, you will see some Grand Sports with and without uh, the magnetic ride suspension. So that's something to look for as well. A magnet ride suspension is very easy to see. It'll have a dial right in front of the center console there from Tor to Sport to select that for you there. So I kind of wanted to take you guys closer to the interior here so we can kind of go over the different features of what separates a base 1LT trim like this car that we've got here all the way to kind of that top more 4LT trim. So the base trim is going to pretty much get you your Corvette and that's it. As you move up through the trim levels, some of the differences you're going to see is that some of these cars will have heated seats. They'll have a heads-up display. So that's gonna be your two LT package. It adds heated seats to the car and then your heads-up display. And then the three LT is gonna add kind of that touchscreen older GM radio there that's gonna have the navigation and um, you know the touchscreen interface there. I also believe that gets you your um, memory seat functions and then a Bose sound system as well. And then you'll also get home link in the mirror there, the visor for your garage door opener. Uh, all these do come standard with OnStar and an auto dimming rear view mirror and side view mirrors as well. So that's not something to worry about that's even seen on the 1LT. And then if you go with a 4LT trim level, all it pretty much is is this crazy leather wrapped interior where GM was trying to compete kind of more with exotic vehicles. So 
The door panels will be wrapped in a leather. You'll have leather stitching. You'll have the dashboard rather than this kind of vinyl material will be an actual leather, um, you know, with color accent stitching. The center armrest, same thing, which is great. And it looks nice. And I think it was like a $7,500 option when the car was new. But the downside with that is that that leather likes to bubble and kind of warp on the dashboard. I've seen it on really low mile cars as low as like, you know, 10,000 miles. Um, when the car sits out in the sun, the glue from the leather will separate because it's literally, as far as I'm aware, this dashboard here just wrapped with leather. So that leather will separate from the dashboard and you'll get kind of bubbling and warping and stuff like that. And there's real no easy fix to that. So a lot of times most people kind of want to go for that 2LT or the uh, 3LT trim level there, just so that way you're getting your heated seats or maybe you're getting that navigation if you like it as well. It's not that big of a deal because that navigation is super old and outdated and you're probably going to swap it out with something more modern anyways, like a unit that would have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but still something to look out for. On the later C6 Grand Sports, you'll find that they have the Centennial Edition. And what that's going to do is it's going to add a lot of stuff that was actually put into this car um, after, you know, the vehicle was purchased. So the Centennial Edition will get you some special graphics in the seats, but it'll also get you a suede steering wheel, a suede e-brake handle, and then suede shift knob with shift boot there. So that's something that's specific to the intent Centennial Edition. Um, a little bit more rare, hard to find. But if that stuff is important to you, like the suede wheel or Alcantara, whatever it may be, you can go ahead and swap that stuff into your car. Now, as far as kind of like problems and things to look out for with the C6, uh, particularly the Grand Sport here, there's not a whole ton. Most of the problems that are synonymous with plaguing the C6 Corvette are going to be isolated to differential issues in the early 0506 models, or you know, you'll hear issues about the LS7 motor and the Z06s. But since all Grand Sports are later production, like I said, 2010 to 2013, and they all use the LS3, there's not a whole lot to watch out for with these cars. The only thing I've heard to watch for with the LS3 is that the, uh, the crank pulley, um, the harmonic balancer can wobble and come off and you're gonna have problems with that. Although that is more of an LS2 problem, but it does also still happen on some of the LS3 motors. So if you're checking out one of these used, Check out the uh, serpentine belt when the vehicle's running. Look for any kind of wobble in the pulleys or walking on the belts there, and you'll see right away whether or not you've got that problem with the pulley there. If you are looking at cars that are modified or you're wanting to modify it yourself, if you're getting a Grand Sport that is not a dry sump one, you will have to look into upgrading the oil pump when you do a cam and associated mods with that. Another option that you'll see on these cars as well is the NPP dual mode exhaust. Um, that, as far as I'm aware, is also a standalone option. It's not built into the LT trim levels. More of that LT, uh, the LT trim levels are pretty much specific to the interior and the options you're gonna find in there. So with the NPP exhaust, it's a dual mode factory exhaust with the flaps in it that will open and close, or you can kind of install your own switch or hardwire to always be open. So you've got that to look for as well. So outside of the LT trim levels for the interior stuff, the only other really options you've got on the car are one, the color. Um, the Grand Sport comes in a huge variety of colors, um, some being more common than others and some being more rare. Uh, but outside of that, you've got the magnetic ride suspension and then the dual mode exhaust. So outside of that, uh, they are you know pretty similar as far as what you're going to find and what you're not going to find in them. And then there are a ton of dealer add-ons that you'll see from these cars, even when they were purchased new. There are many of them that had different kind of spoilers on the back. Some had kind of the full length wing. Some have just that factory little duck bill and that's stock. The factory duck bill is stock the way it came from the factory. If you see any kind of Grand Sport with a wing that goes across the entire deck lid there, that's going to be something that was either put on aftermarket or put on as a dealer installed option there. That's going to pretty much wrap up this video. I just kind of wanted to outline the specifics of the Grand Sport, kind of things that you may want, things that you may not want, and things to look for when shopping one of these particular C6 Corvettes. Now, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the video, if you want me to do kind of a comprehensive C6 buyer's guide, let me know. If you want me to kind of highlight some more of the differences between, you know, a Grand Sport and a ZR1 or a Z06 or a base model, definitely let me know. Um, there's tons and tons of information out there on these cars. And one thing that I would strongly urge you to do if you are interested in one of these is check out the Corvette forum, um, check out Facebook groups, because there is a, a lot of garbage out there to sift through, but there is also a lot, a lot of you know, very useful and a wealth of information out there on these cars because they have been out for quite some time now. You know, 2005 was a while ago. And even when these ended in 2013, that's still, you know, seven years ago from when I'm making this video right now. So you've got a lot of information out there depending on what you're trying to figure out about these cars. Um, the Grand Sport as well, something that makes it 
uh, different that I left out earlier in the video is the uh, shocks on this vehicle. Um, on the earlier Corvettes, you'd see that there was a Z51 handling package. The Grand Sport takes those Z51 handling parts and has them on this car. So uh, you're getting the sway bars and the different shocks and everything like that on the Grand Sport. And then you're also getting the brakes and everything like that, which wasn't Z51 specific, but now you're getting pretty much Z06 brakes with a Z51 suspension. So it's kind of like that in-between cross-ground uh, Corvette there where it's a little more distinctive than a base model, but it's not quite as, you know, crazy horsepower or top of the line as you'd see in like a Z06 or a ZR1. I have heard that the Grand Sport makes a very, very good track car because you don't have to deal with, you know, the cooling issues or just the heat that's, you know, you run into from something like a ZR1 because it's boosted. And a lot of people will also say that, you know, depending on your skill and the power level, a uh, Z06, you know, may be hard for somebody to kind of ease into track days with. So if you buy a Grand Sport, especially if you compare stock for stock, you know, that 436 horsepower versus the 505 of the Z06, it may be a little bit more manageable for somebody that's uh, newer on a track to go ahead and try to run in, um, you know, one of these LS3 powered Grand Sports. Also, um, you're not going to be dealing with the same kind of valve and head issues that you would be seeing on the Z06 there. So it's kind of, you know, pick your weapon thing. Something interesting to see with the time that I'm filming this video right now, the Grand Sport is very, very similar to Z06 pricing. So depending on if that uh, removable roof is important to you or not, or just, you know, do you really want that LS7 or do you want to buy an LS3 and boost it? It's kind of up to you. I mean, you can find a good example Grand Sport for anywhere from probably like 30 to 35. And then you get really into like the rarer um, low miles like the centennial editions or cars with mag ride for 35 to 40 you can find them in that ballpark there i've seen them under thirty thousand dollars that are kind of higher miles or they'll have you know salvage titles or you know just automatic coupes or automatic convertibles and things like that but for you know a manual grand sport coupe you're probably looking around 30 to thirty five thousand dollars which is that same range that you'd be looking at for a z06 z06s are a little bit more expensive but again truly really up to you and what do you want to do with the car that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for this one. Um, did I leave anything important out? Go ahead and drop it down in the comments down below. I look forward to seeing that. Uh, but if you do want more content kind of about what these cars have, what they don't have, definitely let me know. I'm down to do some research myself and bring you guys the findings that I come up with. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.